The curious object today comes from our collection here at Paint and Zoo. We've got over 300 nearly identical bones, all closely linked and lying in one long chain over three and a half meters long. And here it's lying in a figure of eight. Each bone carries a pair of elegantly curved ribs, creating a tube, a tunnel. And at the end, we've got a surprisingly delicate skull with some terrifying teeth that create an inescapable trap. The curious object from the zoo today is the skeleton of an African rock python. Sometimes we talk about a person being spineless, that they're weak, that they're feeble, that they're capable of, incapable of looking after themselves, that they can be pushed around. But this animal is all spine. We've got 300 vertebrae, 300 pairs of ribs, all joined together by powerful muscles that create a capable predator that can bring down prey almost as heavy as itself. So in life, we think this African rock python would have weighed over 30 kilos. But here at Paint and Zoo, we care for Lyra, a reticulated python in our croc swamps exhibit, who is almost twice as heavy. Now, reticulated pythons from Indonesia and Southeast Asia are famous for being the world's longest snakes. And we think that Lyra is over 60 kilos in weight and five meters in length, that's 16 feet. But famously, they can reach over eight meters in length. That is some snake. Now, visitors looking at Lyra will see an unexpected beauty. If you get up close to her, you can see a sheen to her skin, uh, an iridescence in her scales, and that's tiny microscopic structures that catch the light and create a rainbow. And that's particularly easy to see in some species of snakes like reticulated pythons and rainbow boas. Although Lyra's head looks substantial and strong, a quick look at the skeleton shows just how fragile and delicate the snake's skull is. Okay, unlike our skull, where we've got a rigid brain case with a hinged jaw, a snake's skull is made up of many different parts and they're not attached together in the same way as ours. You'll hear people talk about a snake dislocating its jaws to swallow its prey, but in fact they're not attached in the same way and they come apart not only at the sides, but they can also come apart at the center as well. And that allows a snake to, to move its jaws apart to swallow very large prey and those can move in a way that allows them to walk their jaws onto their prey. So the backward curving teeth and the jaws moving around allows them to walk the prey into their mouth. Now this process of walking the teeth and the jaws onto the prey, walking the prey into the mouth is called mandibular walking and it allows the snake to swallow a very large meal and a very large meal is often followed by a huge yawn. If you see one of our snakes yawn, they're using that to realign their jaws to get them back into the correct position. A final curiosity of the python skeleton is to be seen towards the end of its body where the body suddenly narrows down into the tail. On Lyra, if you look closely, you may well be able to see just some small spurs. And sadly, the bones are missing from our museum skeleton. But there are just a few free-floating bones, all that remains of the snake's pelvis, and the spurs, all that remains of the end of those legs, where scientists think that snakes used to have hind legs. We hope you've enjoyed seeing this curious object from the zoo. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe to our videos and come and see our amazing animals here at Paint and Zoo soon.